This is a story about telling stories. More specifically, it is about a storytelling structure known as the monomyth. The monomyth was a term coined by James Joyce in Finnegan's Wake. He used it to describe the universal myth. The term was later appropriated by Joyce scholar and comparative mythologist Joseph Campbell. Campbell studied myths, legends, religions, folk tales, and stories from all over the world, and found certain universal patterns repeating themselves across all of these cultures. He called this universal pattern the hero's journey. The hero's journey was appropriated by novelists and filmmakers such as Chris Vogler, George Miller, and most famously George Lucas in Star Wars. So, what is the monomyth or the hero's journey? We begin with the world, divided into two hemispheres, the ordinary world and the special world, which is quite often a mirror image of the ordinary world. Our hero begins at home, in the ordinary world. This can be the Shire. A herald arrives in the form of an old friend, a letter, a phone call, and the herald brings with them a call to adventure. The hero, who is quite comfortable at home, really doesn't want to go on this adventure, so they refuse the call, until they meet with a mentor who guides them and explains to them the necessity of undertaking this adventure. Based on the advice of the mentor, the hero crosses the threshold from the ordinary world into the special world. Now things start to get strange and dangerous for the hero. They are tested, they meet allies, and they meet enemies, because they are on the road of trials. And they will learn new skills as they approach the sanctum sanctorum of the special world. Once they get to the Sanctum Sanctorum, things don't get any better because the hero is often tortured, killed, and left for dead. The story doesn't end there though because they are quite often reborn. They seize the reward and they begin the journey back home. The journey back home can also be fraught with danger and they meet supernatural aid until they return home with the boon or the elixir. This pattern has been found to exist in some of the earliest stories we know. One of the earliest stories that we know is the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is a Sumerian tale from 2100 BC. The Epic of Gilgamesh tells the story of King Gilgamesh, who was ruler of the city-state of Uruk. He was said to be two-thirds god and one-third man, and hailed for his strength. High-walled Uruk, then, which Gilgamesh rules over, is the ordinary world where we begin our story. And the story is set in motion by the lamentations of the people of Uruk, who find Gilgamesh to be quite the tyrant, and they cry out to the gods to send them a savior to help them against the tyranny of King Gilgamesh. The gods, hearing the lamentations of the people of Uruk, create a man equal in strength to Gilgamesh called Enkidu, and they send him down as an adversary for Gilgamesh. As soon as Enkidu and Gilgamesh meet, they fight. Gilgamesh vanquishes Enkidu with great difficulty, and he has learnt to respect Enkidu's strength. After the fight is over, he extends friendship to Enkidu, and the two become fast friends and engage in a series of adventures. Enkidu can be thought of as the herald who brings the call to adventure to Gilgamesh. 
Some of the adventures that the two undertake are the killing of the ogre Humbaba in the Forest of Cedars and the death of the Bull of Heaven. However, death undertakes Enkidu and Gilgamesh is deeply saddened by his friend's passing. He roams in the wilderness and kills wild beasts until he realizes that he must journey into the netherworld to learn the secret of immortality. Now Gilgamesh will cross the threshold from his world into the netherworld. On the Road of Trials, he meets many characters from the netherworld until his meeting with the mentor Uttanapashtan, who is the only human being entrusted with the secret of immortality. He has crossed the river of death to get to Uttanapashtan, and he is ready to serve any trials to run, learn the secret. However, he fails all the trials set to him by Uttanapashtan. Uttanapashtan's wife, however, takes pity on Gilgamesh and entrusts him with the secret of immortality. She tells him that there is a special plant that grows at the bottom of the ocean, and if Gilgamesh can get to it, he too can benefit from the secret of immortality. On his journey back, Gilgamesh ties heavy stones onto his feet and descends to the bottom of the ocean to retrieve the flower. However, on his return journey, he loses the flower to a serpent. Gilgamesh laments. However, he is hailed as a hero because even though he has, he has lost the flower that could have granted him immortality, he has learned a more important lesson, which is humility. He has learned that it is the fate of all humanity to suffer death. This is the elixir that he brings back to Uruk at the end of his journey. You will notice that some of the patterns from the universal themes of the hero's journey can be found in Gilgamesh. However, not all of the patterns appear in the 12-step monomyth described earlier. Consider some of these other examples. The Odyssey and the Iliad and the Greek tragedies are classic examples of the monomyth. Other examples include Hindu and Buddhist religious texts and some of the modern retellings of these texts such as Siddhartha by Hermann Hesse. The hero's journey is also a very popular motif in young adult literature such as Harry Potter. And of course, ever since George Lucas employed it in Star Wars, the hero's journey has been a popular structure for filmmakers. One of my favorites is Babe. Another recent film that employs elements of the hero's journey is Juno. Think about some of the universal patterns that are presented in the monomyth and how they can benefit you as you tell your story. <laughs> 